Hello viewers. In this video, we will try to understand the structure of immunoglobulin a bit further. We will delve into the fine structure of immunoglobulin. By now, you know that immunoglobulins are made up of immunoglobulin domains. Either light chain or uh, heavy chain both have the immunoglobulin domains in their variable region as well as constant region. So understanding the structure of this immunoglobulin domain is highly important. So uh, an immunoglobulin domain uh, is made up of beta sheets. And these beta sheets are made up of anti-parallel beta strands. Okay. So you can uh, imagine a sandwich where you have two bread slices. Between them there is butter and both the breads are held together with a toothpick. Okay, so if we make a comparison of this sandwich with the, the immunoglobulin fold, then the breads represent the beta sheets and the butter represents the hydrophobic moieties coming out or emerging out of these two beta sheets and the toothpick which is holding together the whole structure uh, can be compared to that of the disulfide bonds. Okay, so immunoglobulin domain to uh, remember it easily, you just need to remember the sandwich, butter sandwich. Okay, now the key features of this immunoglobulin domains are that the length of uh, the polypeptide chain making this amino, this uh, immunoglobulin domain is uh, about 110 amino acids. Okay, and there are intra chain, intra chain disulfide bonds that keeps them together. And uh, the sandwich structure has two pleated, beta pleated sheets made up of anti-parallel beta strands. I hope uh, this is uh, clear to you now. The arrangement of different beta strands and loops arising out of these beta strands is shown here in this figure. This figure is a uh, structure showing you the structure of the light chain where you are seeing the variable domain and the constant domain of the light chain. Now both these are uh, immunoglobulin domains. If we open up this structure, you will see that these are the anti-parallel beta strands. Okay, and the whole structure, the, the different colors uh, of the beta strands are shown because these three strands are in one uh, beta sheet while these four strands are in another beta sheet. Likewise here, light and dark colors are shown for different beta sheets. Now these two beta sheets are held together by intrachain disulfide bonds and certain loops are coming out of these beta strands. And you can see that you can uh, traverse through N to C terminals, right? Uh, and in between you have uh, beta strands as well as looping out of the polypeptide chain. If you see carefully, uh, this is the real domain and this is the serial domain that is variable domain of the light chain and the constant uh, region of the light chain. And the difference is very clear. It, is, it looks bigger and it looks uh, with the fewer number of uh, beta strands. You can see here that the, there is an extra pair of uh, beta strands and an extra loop as well. So uh, little more contribution is coming from these uh, loops in the in case of variable region. As you know that variable region is the region that binds to the antigen, right? And that to these loops, the region that is forming the loops actually are the interacting sites uh, that interacts with the antigen. Now these loops are also termed as complementarity determining regions. So they, de they decide whether an, an antigen will be complementary to this antibody molecule or not, whether they are, the, the V region will fit or the antigen will fit with this uh, uh, you know, variable region. You, can, you see here, this is the simplistic way of representing an antibody molecule. This uh, V site, V region has the antibody uh, antigen binding site. This is the antigen. So the shape you can see is uh, quite similar here. But it's not that the variable region is very rigid. It's not rigid. It is flexible. Just like an induced fit theory, uh, the antigen antibody fits together, right? The 
complementarity determining region is also known as hyper variable region and rest of the region is known as framework region okay so again imagine the two, uh, two beta sheets made up of two uh, made up of different anti parallel uh, beta strands loops are coming out and loops are the regions harboring these complementarity determining region if i plot because the average length of the immunoglobulin domain is 110 amino acid if i plot the uh, redis residue number position of the amino acids in the immunoglobulin domain here and i write variability which is, which is nothing but the uh, you know frequency with which an amino acid is uh, present at at any position or uh, in the immunoglobulin fold this variability can also be defined by uh, this formula that which is uh, number of the different amino acid at a particular given position so here you can see uh, if at any position you are frequently uh, you know and uh, encountering uh, 10 amino acids and you then will divide it by the frequency of the most common amino acid out of 10 uh, if uh, this is occupied this particular position is occupied by uh, 10 uh, you know amino acids right and the most abundant one is a particular one so the variability will be defined by that Uh, dividing the number of different amino acid present and the frequency of the most common amino acid about 50 to 15 to 20 percent of the variable region is uh, contributed uh, by the cdrs and rest of the region makes the framework region antigen antibody interactions are just like uh, enzyme substrate interactions and uh, they are kind of induce switch into each other there are conformational changes once the antigen binds to an antibody here you can see in the figure that this is the antigen binding to the antibody and there are changes conformational changes once it is bound right you see here the antigen antibody uh, as separate molecules and once they interact there are subtle uh, changes in their con the conformation of the polypeptide chain so they do undergo uh, you know conformational change or they uh, there is induced fit uh, when they interact with each other so they are not rigid structures they are flexible and uh, uh, the questions that we must uh, you know ponder upon now that whether heavy chains cdr contributes more and shape of the antigen binding site what is the shape of the antigen binding site in the antibody molecule and whether the cdrs are rigid or flexible i think uh, by far you know uh, the answers to these questions in this figure you are seeing that a peptide is uh, binding to uh, you know peptide derived from hiv protease is binding to the fab fragment that is fragment antigen binding and you see before binding and after binding there is a conformational change in the polypeptide uh, of the fab fragment so this again clear, clarifies that yes there is a ki kind of induced fit and or conformational changes when antigen and antibody binds to each other now i will tell you what is the function of the constant uh, region uh, just behind the variable region that is cl in the light chain and ch1 in the uh, heavy chain so actually these uh, constant region uh, immunoglobulin domains Uh, extend the variable region and allows its rotation okay and keep the vl region as well as vh region together right and also they contributes to the antibody diversity by random association of variable and the constant domain we will shortly learn what does this mean uh, while the formation of the antibody molecule different light chain contributing uh, fragments and different constant region contributing fragments come together so this is the v uh, cl and ch1 region that contributes to the diversity of these molecules by random association and also uh, these increases the possible number of stable interaction between the vl and vh so these will be contributing for the stable interaction between the vl vl and vh region the function uh, of the other uh, constant region domains like ch2 uh, domain is uh, uh, that in case of ige and igm it acts as the hinge region while 
in case of uh, IG A and IG D, the hinge region is the one that you know held the heavy chains together. And CH2 in case of IG A, D, G, and CH3 in case of IG E and M uh, is the region that is mo most accessible and helps in complement activation by IG G and IG M. Right. So this is this region is uh, important for complement activation. And the fourth region uh, is the fourth constant region domain uh, differs in uh, soluble antibody molecules and membrane bound antibody molecules. So, so uh, now I must tell you that the antibodies can be present in two forms, soluble and membrane bound form. Soluble forms actually uh, possesses uh, hydrophilic tails and uh, that varies in length at C terminus. While if you see the um, constant domain on the membrane bound, antibodies they will have an extra cellular hydrophilic spacer they will have an uh, hydrophobic transmembrane region as well as a short cytoplasmic tail so this uh, is the end of uh, the c terminus of the ch4 or ch3 domain of the membrane bound antibody molecule so we understood uh, what is the structure of immunoglobulin domain what is the variable region domain and how does it help in you know binding to the antigen what are the cdrs what are the hyper variable region and what are the functions of the constant region domain now um, the hinge region domain that is uh, iga ig uh, d ig e and m and e uh, all the antibodies uh, have but they are named differently hinge region is uh, is present in the gda while ch2 domain is present in the me antibodies so actually this hinge region in gda antibodies igg igd iga shows no homology with other domains like immunoglobulin domain and this is a proline and cysteine rich residue and it imparts the flexibility to the fab arms like here you see because of this hinge region these uh, this antigen is caught by the antibody molecule while it can be flexible also and it can capture more antigens around the antibody molecule so for more information on antibody molecules please do visit this channel and keep coming thanks for watching subscribe like and share this video and do visit for new videos. Thank you.